The DevBot V2, with all of its sensors and all of its software, is probably one of the only race cars in the world that can make it up a hill climb like this. We're here at Shelby Walsh this week. It's a hill climb, just like at Goodwood, and at hill climbs generally you have trees, forests, things like that that obstruct the cars. Normally when we go to a track, we have really good coverage the whole way around and we don't have to worry about it, so we can either choose to run on GPS or on LiDARs, whereas here we don't really have that choice. But obviously when you're going through trees and things like that, it gets blocked. It becomes a problem and you have to find another way to localise. It's really important that the car can still localise, so it still needs to understand its position in the world. So we have two antennas on the car, one on the front and one on the rear. They both see satellites. Now, the way that they see satellites is a cone spread out from each antenna and then it views satellites ranging 180 degrees from its position. Position. The unit inside the car measures the satellites on each antenna and both antennas have to see the same satellites. When you're in open air without any trees around you or objects or big buildings you can see lots of satellites but when you're going through forests this cone that you can see the satellites through is obstructed by the trees so you have a limited range of view of where the satellites can go. It's kind of similar to if you're driving through a tunnel in a car and you've got your sat-nav on. When you get first go in, you have coverage for a little bit of time until it, it decides that it doesn't have enough GPS coverage to give you an accurate position. So often your position will drift or sometimes it won't even update at all. And then when you get out the other side after a few seconds and it's got connection back to the satellites, your position jumps to where it now knows it is again. Under three satellites, we can't run on GPS anymore. The accuracy of the, of the GPS goes to over 50 centimetres, which here on a hill climb track is much too low. When you start to lose that GPS and you start to cut it out of your localisation, you can localise using LIDARs, which are lasers that measure distance from where you are, and then you can reference where those objects are, and then you can use that to see where you're going. Our LiDAR scanners operate in an infrared frequency, so around 905 nanometers. Our LiDARs can see up to 80 meters range, and they basically send out a laser pulse, which then hits objects and then returns to the LiDAR. So it's a time of flight measurement sensor, um, and this allows it to build up a map of the surroundings. The DevBot V2, with all of its sensors and all of its software and its methods of doing things, is probably one of the only race cars in the world that can make it up a hill climb like this on its own. Whenever we come to a track for the first time, we always map it so that we create the bounds in the drivable area. We do that with a GPS backpack, but because there isn't good GPS coverage here, we can't necessarily do that. We tried to make a map anyway, but unfortunately the scooter that we used wasn't quite powerful <laughs> enough to get up the hill. We're going to head up the hill now to make a map for the hill climb. Tell me about those bad boy you're on. <laughs> the, uh, the Chaos 4000, we, uh, we meet again. Lose it last time in Modena and in Monte Blanca. Now we're using it to get up the hill here today. It's quite steep, it is really, it's like 16% gradient at one point. So here's actually quite nice and open, there's kind of nothing different here from what we would normally see on a track. It's only once you get kind of further up into the trees, you lose sight of the satellites. It really is struggling, I'm not sure I'm going to make it boys, if I'm honest. This is literally all I've got. No, that's it. I can't. I can't do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> At Goodwood, it's quite likely that quite a lot of the track won't have GPS coverage. The start is really bad. The middle is kind of okay, and the end's really bad as well when you're under a lot of tree coverage. So we're here to kind of replicate that scenario and we can force no GPS coverage. So if we completely kind of shut the unit down, we're forcing ourselves onto LiDAR localization so we can do an entire run just on that instead. 